Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 RC2 released today for developers and public beta testers at the same time. This is a bit of a surprise as many expected iOS 16.5 to release to the public today, including myself. I thought we'd see it, but typically when Apple releases an RC2 or release candidate 2, that means they need to fix additional bugs before it's ready for public release. Now, along with this, they also released an updated version of iPadOS 16.5 RC2 as well. Now this came in at a very small 234.1 megabytes that's on the 14 pro max. It was about 200 megabytes on the iPhone 11 and iPad as well. It's a pretty small update overall. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go up to general, then about, and as you can see, the build number is 20F66. This should be the build number that's released to the public. As long as there's no additional bugs, it's very rare to have an RC three. So I would expect this to be the final version. And if you're wondering if you're a beta tester and you want to stay on the public version, when this comes out, just update to this version. And then you'll have the public version as long as Apple doesn't change it. Either way, you can easily disable that now under software update. So under software update, you can go into your beta updates and turn them off after the public version is out to the public. If it's a different build, you'll have an update. If it's not, then you'll just have it already. And then you can turn it off or just leave it on and continue to get those updates. Now, as far as a modem update, this does not contain a modem update. We have the same version that we've had for a couple versions here. 1.70.02 on the 14 pro and 14 pro max. It may vary depending on the device you have. As far as new features, there's no new features in this other than what's already in the RC2, RC1 version. RC2 doesn't contain any of those features, so nothing has changed as far as that goes. There was a new feature released in Australia and New Zealand today if you have an iPhone 14, 14 Plus, 14 Pro, or 14 Pro Max. Under Settings, you should now actually see the option under Emergency here, emergency SOS down at the bottom, you should now have the option for emergency SOS via satellite on those devices. So you can try a demo, see what it's like that should be available in Australia and New Zealand now. And as far as why they needed an update, well, I did a follow up this past weekend and also asked a question on Twitter. Do you think iOS 16.5 RC needs another update before public release? 50% said, yes, it needs another update. 50% said, no, it doesn't. That's out of 1,822 votes. So it seems that quite a few people were still having an issue with it, despite others saying it was very stable. In particular, I mentioned another issue that Max Weinbeck was having and others had actually said they were having with the phone just randomly heating up. He actually had it in his car in a cup holder out of the sun and it was getting very hot. You can see that on his Twitter post and this particular update hopefully will fix that, but Apple hasn't actually said what they're fixing in this. So as far as camera fixes or anything else, I haven't noticed any difference whatsoever, whether that's taking a photo and having it actually change. I did that today and saw it completely change the way it looked in particular when I took a actual photo of the iPhone. Let me show you what I mean. And this photo of the iPhone automatically went into HDR. It seemed over sharpened, changed the background. I tried to edit it the best I could, and it just didn't seem to work that well. So they definitely haven't fixed the camera bug. They haven't even addressed it. As far as battery life and more, we don't know until we use it for a few days, but Apple will probably release this to the public before we have the chance to do that. I really wish Apple would bring more documentation. And if we go into the feedback app, wait for it to load here, go into recent activity. You can see here we have the RC release notes. Nothing has changed for RC2 here or the website as well. Nothing has changed as far as those release notes. Maybe they'll update them again, but we don't really know. Additionally, it could be a security update that they're updating and that's it. We don't really know specifically as they just haven't said, and I really wish they would give better documentation as to what they're fixing specifically. As far as bugs, the bugs I had with the RC version, I'm still having with RC2, including the notifications here where they just jump around. You can see that here. They're just bouncing all over the place and they don't seem to be very good, but overall, I'm not sure why they've fixed this. Maybe because they're going to move this over to iOS 17 with a new notification center. So they're not spending a lot of time here. The same thing happens with me in the health app under medications, the log file crashes the app. I've reported this in feedback as I've mentioned before, but it doesn't seem to be fixed in RC2. That's not a huge issue as many people have said they don't have it, but it is something that's still there for me. You can still report those issues in feedback. So make sure you do that if you have an issue with it. 
Other than that, I've had no issues so far, but I did want to share my current battery life and then take a look at the overall Geekbench scores as well. So my battery life, if we go into settings, we'll go up here to battery, battery health and charging. I'm at 97%. You can see the overall capacity and charging cycles I've gone through here with coconut battery. It's a Mac app that's outside of the app store. So if you want to try it, you can just find it online and it's a free app to try. And it's just something I use regularly in these videos. But today I've had two hours and 22 minutes of screen active time, eight hours and 28 minutes of screen idle time. And I've used about 35% of my battery battery life overall with this update hasn't been great. And there's been a lot of background activity despite having background turned off. So background app refresh is disabled, still causing an issue for me. Some people say it's great battery life. Other people say it's not. As far as when to expect the public release, iOS 16.5, I would expect probably as soon as tomorrow. But if there's additional issues, it could be later in the week. Apple has not said specifically when it will be, but on their website, on the announcement for the Apple Watch Pride Edition, if you scroll down toward the bottom here, you can see in the middle, it actually says the new Pride Celebration watch face and iPhone wallpaper will be available next week. This was posted last week, so we know that iOS 16.5 5 is coming this week unless there's an additional issue. As far as iOS 16.6 betas, again, those usually come out the day after iOS 16.5 launches, we get the next beta version. They could change this up. And of course, iOS 17 with all new features and more should be shown on June 5th at WWDC. Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, let's take a look at that as nothing seems to be different at all from RC one, but I did run benchmarks on this, the iPhone 11 and the iPad as well. So if we go into Geekbench six, you can see the benchmarks here, 2,514 for single core, 6,142 for multi-core. If we compare those to what we had before, you can see here prior to this, we actually had about the same scores, very similar, a little bit higher for multi-core with 6,142 compared to 6,127. They're so close that basically you would expect them to perform the same. As far as the other devices, let me just bring those in here quickly so you can take a look. And from left to right, I have the M2 iPad Pro. It's the one terabyte version with 16 gigs of RAM, iPhone 11, and iPhone 14 Pro Max. So this gives you an idea of the overall scores if you were interested in that. And so that's everything with iOS 16.5 RC2. If you find anything else I haven't mentioned, let me know in the comments below if it's fixed any bugs for you or seems any different. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, it will be linked in the description as it always is. And if you haven't subscribed, already please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is aaron i'll see you next time